Hi everyone, it's Nerdy, and this is my review of Among the Sleep Enhanced Edition. Among the Sleep was developed and published by Quillbyte Studio. It was originally released on May 29th, 2014, and the Enhanced Edition dropped on November 2nd, 2017. The story of this first-person horror survival game starts on our character's second birthday. The party consists of just mom and the baby, until there's a knock at the door and there's an argument between mom and someone we don't see. We eventually get our birthday gift that we have to open by ourselves, and then also look for, because it's a living teddy bear. Terrifying. Teddy encourages us to go into the closet that turns into a closet hallway with this dragged black stuff on the floor. We make it to the end and mom opens the closet doors and puts us to sleep, where shit gets real. After rescuing Teddy, our mission becomes finding mom, and this brings us to a dreamscape in which an adorable playhouse sits. The interior is a little strange for a playhouse. It features this machine that aids in us finding mom as long as we feed it memories in the forms of items. During our search for the items, we are hunted by two separate monsters. One is this tall, like skinny thing that looks like maybe like what a child would scribble out as their monster and then the other one is a coat. We can't fight either of these monsters. I mean, we're two years old. All we can do is hide underneath things to save ourselves from their grasps. I thought the designs of the monsters were great. One of them, as I said, looks like what a child would draw their monster out when they're explaining to their parents what their monster looks like and the other one is a coat which is great because it's also like one of those things where like you're walking around in the dark and then you take a corner and you see like, oh shit, no, that's just my clothing. So I feel like they both really fit for what a child be, would be afraid of. Whenever these monsters show up, the toddler's vision starts to blur, which adds a bit of anxiety while trying to find something to crawl under. I really love the design of the areas in the game. The starting house is something I wish I was living in. It's fucking huge. And the overgrown Victorian era house is just super cool. Like, would probably want to live in that too. The place the playhouse resides in is really neat too. Great use of brassy colors and the machine inside gives it a bit of a steampunk feel. I also like later on in the game when you go back to the original house, everything kind of warps and it's just like things are topsy-turvy. I was really into that like design of it. The game takes a linear path through these areas, which I honestly appreciate because there's no map in the game. And if there's no map in a game, I'm probably gonna get lost more than likely. I mean, I get lost when there are maps in the game. But if there's no map in a game and it is a horror game, I'm just gonna end up like crawling in corners for a minute just to like attempt to get my bearings and also courage enough to like look for where I'm supposed to be anyways. So love the linear set. <laughs> But anyways, the toddler can walk, run, climb, and crawl, with crawling being the fastest movement choice. Teddy tells us early on if we get scared to just hug him. And when we do, he lets off a wee bit of light. I found myself using Teddy less and less as the game went on, mostly because I was crawling more, and also the amount of light he emits wasn't enough for me to use him as a crutch. We can interact with almost all of the items in the environment, which to me is super satisfying. So what if I opened up all of the drawers in the kitchen to climb up on the counter just to throw a bunch of plates off the thing, just to break them? I'm a baby. I can do what I want. Handling items in the game felt smooth, and I didn't have any issues with them until I had to turn this wheel in the playhouse. Some items go into our inventory to be used later to either fuel the Dreamscape playhouse machine, or to allow us to move forward to the next area. Later on in the game, we learn how to throw things. Happy birthday, you can now throw shit around the house and destroy mommy's nice things. We also have to open doors, which honestly made me tense. I was just like really nervous that there was gonna be a cheap jump scare from around the corner of the door. However, I don't think any of the jump scares in the game were just added haphazardly. They all made sense and added to the game instead of just being like, oh great, another cheap jump scare. And it goes without saying that they did scare me, so good job. 
The audio carries a lot of the tension and scares in the game. The house is always making some kind of noise, and in the later levels the ambient noises of outside become quickly unsettling. The sounds in the levels makes it feel like there's something just around the corner or behind the door, and it honestly got me. The game also features lullaby humming, which is the easiest thing to twist and make terrifying, in my opinion. The high-pitched noise that accompanies the monsters is so unnerving to me. That, combined with the blurred vision and the panic of getting underneath something, I was just very scared, guys. Hiding from the monsters isn't that difficult. It's the blurred vision and the noises that makes getting underneath something more tense and urgent. The soundtrack of Among the Sleep is ominous and somber, but also some tracks sound like sleep or meditation music. The calmer ones honestly sound like those theta, delta, beta, etc. waves for sleep. I really enjoy them. The ominous and somber tracks unsettled me while I was writing the script. I'm not even playing the game and I'm on the edge of my seat. The enhanced edition comes with a museum that allows you to walk around and look at concept art. And oh my god, I just love looking at concept art and seeing the behind the scenes of game design, so obviously I enjoyed it. And it also comes with an alternate ending. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about the alternate ending. I don't count this as a spoiler because it didn't make the cut of the actual game, but if you count it as a spoiler, I wouldn't suggest watching the end part of this video. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Share with friends, I already said share. Uh, socials are in the, the description box below. Um, I would recommend this game if you're looking for a short horror game to play through, and yeah, uh, don't leave if you don't count it as a spoiler, as I will be going over with it. Over with it? Over it. I'm gonna go over it right now. I'm gonna stop talking now and start talking about the alternate ending. Places go in.
five little animals on a steep, steep hill. A snail that dreams of climbing trees, but never will. A hungry, starving hippo whose gummies are red. And her best friend, Seagull, lying lifeless and dead. <laughs> and now, for the main ingredient. Thank you. You did very well. I will enjoy you very much. Here's the thing about the alternate ending. I like it better. I think it completes the vibe that I first got from Teddy, with him being A, creepy, and B, leading us into a dark, scary closet. Teddy again recites the end of the storybook that he was reading when we first met, and calls back to his comment about the train set. To me, it makes those scenes more meaningful and not just a bit that gives you more time to get the feel for the controls. It also ties in the memories that we have to collect in a better way. Like, to me, it makes more sense than collecting them to find mom. I mean, yes, it's a sad, dark ending, but my personal opinion is that it just makes more sense. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please leave it a like and share it with friends and family. Um, if you aren't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. Thank you, subscribers, and special shout out thank you to my patron, Sabat. Uh, if you're interested in following any of my social media links, they're in the description below. There's also a Discord. And I'll see everybody in the, the next one. Bye.